Okay, so I'm loading in a new whiteboard. The question we decided to do is the uh, last question, mostly because it's the easiest one. I know. It's like, oh, look, he does the easy questions and leaves the hard questions. I know how to do this. I know how to do this like the back of my hand. I just don't have time to make videos for them. I, I need to be able to post these. So we're going to be doing this question here. Um, if you have issues, please let me know. I'll try to break this down really nicely conceptually on how this question works. I think everything applies because it's two-dimensional kinematics. It Everything applies. So biggest thing here, split your X and Y. Your X and Y are done separately. The only thing that's the same is the time. Okay? So, let's first draw our diagram. You guys can read the question. I'm going to jump straight to the whiteboard. I'm really sorry I'm doing these loosey-goosey and not as like um, intense as I was previously. I, I do apologize a little bit. I'm, I'm not going to lie to people. I do feel bad. But, such is life. And that's a bad way to do it. This is uh, Theta. So we're essentially trying to find this distance right here, right? That's what it tells us. So how do we approach this question? Always put it into two dimensions, X dimension, Y dimension here, okay? In our X dimension, I if you go back to the formula video, I think, I, I don't know if I did it in the crash course one, but in the X dimension, okay? In the X dimension, there is never acceleration in a free fall question. So like, how do I know this is a free fall question? Well, the second, if we draw a free body diagram, that's why these free body diagram, like for a single drop of water out here, it's gonna have force gravity pulling down and that's it. That's it, right? Force gravity is only in the Y direction. If we're only in the Y direction, then our X direction does not have any acceleration. So alpha, so alpha, we're not in rotational, AX equals zero. Our a y will always be gravity, always. Okay. Another thing is, um, I don't know if you guys have seen these diagrams before. And once we reach the apex, we're straight across, right? So if we zoom in here, notice how this the x component. I didn't do a good job. The x component stays constant throughout the entire thing. Now, why does the x component stay constant? No acceleration is happening on that. So there's no entity to change velocity. Acceleration is the entity that changes velocity. Velocity is the entity that changes position. Obviously, it's moving in the x direction, which means there is velocity. But the velocity does not change because there is no acceleration, which means that this arrow length right here in the x direction is the same as the arrow length right here as the same as the arrow length right here. What changes is the y direction. The starts really big, gets smaller, and then eventually goes to zero. Okay? So what that means is that um, x velocity, velocity x initial is equal to velocity x final at any point. And I, I, I don't, you don't need to do all this to solve this question. I'm just trying to like help you guys understand this conceptually. If you go to the previous question right above this one, you'll see in the diagram how that works out. Okay? So now, what do we need to find? We need to find, for this question in particular, uh, y final is equal to question mark, right? Or like how high does it go? How do we do that? Right, like how, how do we do that? It's like we were given like barely any information. We are given that vo is equal to 40, and then we have theta is equal to 37, and distance is equal to 31. I'm sorry, we are given distance. Um, we'll just write that in as 31, and this is 37. Okay. What do we do? Well, look at your directions here. Right? So, like I said, this is why I wrote this out. Like, our x stays constant. I always think that finding time is a great, great, great place to start. Is it always going to be foolproof? No. Sometimes finding time is redundant. But I think if you're just stuck on this kinematic, of find time using one dimension. Typically x. It's typically x you can find time because it's easier. All right. So, well, what is hello? What is velocity x initial? Right. Well, we know velocity initial is equal to forty. Right, we we know that it's equal to forty. 
at an angle of 37. See where I'm getting at with this? This is a trig. So, velocity x initial is equal to um, adjacent opposite hypotenuse, Sokotoa. You will get cosine of 37 times 40. Okay, that is a velocity x initial. Velocity x initial is equal to Okay, 31.94 meters per second. Okay, cool. Yeah. What does that give us? Well, we need to find time, right? So, theoretically, what you could do is... Where's my cursor? You can go into this formula right here. You know, we'll just use that formula, actually. I In my head, I think of it differently, but that's fine. But what is this? This is saying... No. That's why. Um, <laughs> okay, so what you have to use is you have to use this average velocity formula. Now, why can you use the average velocity formula? I'm trying to think. Technically, what you have to use is you have to use this formula, and I don't want you guys to use a quadratic, and I'm trying to get you guys like, oh, there's faster ways to do things, right? Oh, hold on, hold on. No, you can use this one. You can use this one. This one, this one will also work. So um, I'm really trying to push, push this one. Because I think this one is way more valuable. So the way I think about it is calc way. You guys don't need to think the calc way. So if we look in at our whiteboard here, we have acceleration is equal to zero. Right? If acceleration is equal to zero, then we can't use this equation, we can't use this equation, we can't use this one. Try to stay away from averages if it doesn't say average. What equation does that leave with us? That leaves us with this one right here. Okay? Remember, that can be rewritten as x final is equal to x initial plus one half velocity final plus velocity initial all over t uh, sorry times time times time right I just rewrote that well what is our x final our x final is 31 is that the 31 yeah that's the 31 so 30 31 meters is equal to x initial zero plus one half velocity final. Remember, velocity final and velocity initial are the exact same thing. So velocity final will be 31.94 plus 31.94 times time. Okay, solving this out for time. I'm gonna skip this, uh, working it out. Um, but know that you do like actually need to do that work. You get a time of 0 0.97 seconds. Uh, you guys can do the algebra. I'm, I'm running out of time. So that is our time. Why does that help us? What good does time do? Remember, time is the only thing that can go from x to y. So now we can use this time to go into our things. So now we have a y still. We, we still have this, obviously. A y is equal to gravity. We have velocity initial y. We can use this, this trig relationship down here to get this equal to 40 sine of 37 equal to. Hey, remember, real quick, check, make sure your calculator didn't degrees. 24.07, okay? We know that time now is equal to 0 0.97 seconds. So what we can do is go into our formula sheet. Um, and we can kind of pick and choose. Uh, we have time and I would pick one that has time, right? But we're also trying to find distance here. So I would use this one right here. Yes, it's the quadratic, but it has time, it has acceleration, it has velocity initial, and it has most importantly, it has this x and x final here. Now, we're working in the y direction. This is why I did that formula review sheet, right? You need to be able to use all these formulas. If you don't like doing it that way, it's this formula right here. Right? This is written out in y, but you also need to understand that it's the same thing written out next. You can sub the variables as long as every single variable gets subbed, okay? So what this will be, this will be y is equal to y initial plus velocity y initial plus times time, sorry, times time plus one half a t squared. So let's sub things in. Y is equal to, well that's our y final, so we're trying to find height initial zero. 
our velocity y zero we just found right up here to be 24.07 times our time of 0 0.97 plus one half negative 9.8 times 0 0.97 squared. I'm gonna put this into a calculator real quick. And you get, wouldn't you know, 18.75 will round meters. Remember everything goes back to its standard units. Now if we look into our question here, 18.745, I just decided around a little bit differently. Now quickly I'm going to go through the conceptual of, um, I don't know what questions ended up on there to be completely honest. Um, right, okay, so for this question you do the exact same thing, right? You would do the idea, so read through that question real quick. What you would use first is you would use x, find, instead of finding, like we were given our velocity initial here, right? What you do is you find this value right here, right? You find his, uh, let me pause real quick and think about it, just to explain it to you guys. I've decided to not explain that last question, but I will give like a, a way how to do it so you guys can do it. I understand how to do it now. If you guys know the range formula perfect, otherwise there's a different way to do it. So for here, we're given a velocity initial x, or sorry, velocity initial, noting that it's only in the x direction, okay? So remember, so coordinates of the initial position, literally just give its coordinates, 0, 55, right? Components of the initial velocity, it only has x to start, which is why you get 17 and a half, which is exactly what's written up here, along with this zero. As time goes on, notice, this is just equal to 17.5. This is just equal to 17.5, because it is not affected by time. Whereas this one is affected by time. Do you guys even have this question? I don't even know if you do. Mountain climber for 30. What question did you guys get? Do you even get this fireman problem? I just work through something for nothing? Well, this is awkward. Uh. I don't. I'm, I'm going to be completely. I'm going to be completely real with the people. I don't know where I pulled those extra questions. Hopefully you were able to screenshot and figure out this question. Oh, oh, the doy. Um, I got to be looking in two dimensions. I was still looking at the one dimensional ones. There we go. Yeah, okay, fire So you guys do have this question. Perfect. Uh, about 13 minutes. Okay. So for this question here, x initial is zero. Position. Position initial is zero because you start at zero. I think we've gone through all that. So our velocity x initial is 17.5 and that doesn't change. It doesn't change because there's no acceleration. We just went over that. Our velocity y is affected by acceleration and it's affected by negative 9.8 t. Now if you do the kinematic equations you'll be able to solve for that. Right? Now position, actually let's go through that right. Let's go, let's go through how you get this. How you get that is you use this equation right here. Velocity final is equal to velocity initial plus a t. You don't have an acceleration. So this entire term goes to zero because it's zero acceleration. Velocity final is equal to velocity initial. A velocity initial was given as 17.5, which is why this is always given as 17.5. Okay? This one right here, same thing. Same thing, right? Velocity final is equal to velocity initial, zero. Acceleration is negative 9.8 t. Negative 9.8 t. Now, we go to position. All right, position. Um, for this one, 17.5 t. Well, that's this top one right here. x final is equal to x initial. That term is 0. Our velocity initial was 17.5, which is why you get 17.5 t. Acceleration is 0. That entire term goes to 0. 
x final becomes 17.5 t. Exactly what you see in the answer, right? If we go here, y is equal to y, y final is equal to y initial, that's 55, 55 right here, plus velocity initial t. There is no velocity initial t, so this term goes away. Plus 1 half times negative 9.8 t squared. That simplifies to negative 4.9 t squared. Negative 4.9 t squared. These are all coming from your kinematic equations. Okay? So now how long in seconds? You can use time. In this case, you have to use y. Right? So if time doesn't work for x, the reason over here we use x is because it stopped in the x direction before it stopped in the y. Right? So if we think of something like flying through the air, right? flying through the air, flying through the air, this one got hit by a wall. It's stopping in the x direction before it drops. Right? But if we think of this object here, it's dropping, 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 dropping. It stops because it hits something down. Like it stopped in the y direction. So use whichever direction it stops in. Otherwise, just try one. If that doesn't work, try the other. That's how you get this time here. What speed? All you do is go into these uh, velocity equations here and then plug in the time. Uh, to find the velocity final for both x and y, you use trig to figure out the angle on the thing. This one down here for just a crash course, how you do it. What you do, I'm not going to work through it, but I just want to like give you an idea of what to start. So if you know the range formula, fine and dandy. If you don't, this is becomes kind of difficult. But what you do is you do velocity initial here, velocity final as here. Now, why can you do this? Right? This, not only in a direction sense, but your height when you're doing this will always be exactly one half your time. So what you do is you set velocity initial equal to x, some value. Velocity final is equal to zero because at this highest point, you're zero. Okay? You only work in the y direction here. Okay? Why? Because at this point, you still have x velocity and you don't know. You don't know what this initial starting is. You're trying to find that. Right? So what you do is uh, velocity y final squared is equal to velocity initial y squared plus 2a delta y, right? Oh, hackers. You have to do, okay, you know what? You know what? Forget about it. Forget about it. Range formula. I'm just going to give you guys the range formula. For those of you who don't know it, we'll, we'll do, we'll work on it. I'm just gonna give you a range formula. It's just deriving the range formula each and every time is something I would do, but I get it. You don't want to do that. Uh, eighteen, huh? Uh, give me a second, pause, and then find it. So here's your range formula. If you don't know it, you don't know it. I'm like. I'm sorry, like genuinely, this is one of those things that I think is worth memorizing. Okay, data being the angle that you launch at, gravity being gravity, velocity initial being velocity initial. So what you would do is you would use um, this range. You would set 3.7 equal to range. You have gravity, you have the angle, they give you at 45 and you find velocity initial, use that velocity initial with the change gravity, right? At this point, I'm not going to bother to teach you guys how to do it the other way. It's too close to the final. It doesn't matter. Yeah, sorry. I really am. Um, good luck. I don't know when these will be going up.